Hey guys and welcome back. So for those of you that watch the channel on a regular basis and follow my life here in China, this isn't going to be one of those videos. Today I'm going to be talking about the Feiyu A1000 3-axis electronic gimbal. If you're not interested in technology videos then please check out the next video. But for those of you that are here for this video, first of all we're going to be looking at an unboxing, then we're going to be looking at how to balance the gimbal, and lastly we're going to be doing some footage comparison between handheld camera, single-handed grip, and dual-handed grip. If you guys aren't interested in looking at the unboxing, then please skip to the balancing video here. And likewise, if you already know how to balance the gimbal and you just want to compare the footage, then please skip to this time code here. If you are here for the whole video, then let's get on with the unboxing and see what we actually get inside the box. Okay, so as you can see from the unboxing video, everything comes supplied in this really nice carry case and it's got a really sturdy construction. I'd feel more than comfortable taking it on any of my trips when I'm traveling around making videos. So one of the assumptions that people make when they buy a gimbal stabilizer system like this is that they're just going to be able to buy it, put their camera on top, turn it on and it's going to make all of their footage buttery smooth. Whereas in reality, there's quite a long, arduous balancing process before you can actually turn the gimbal on. Now what I've done is I've put together a small video explaining how I go about balancing the system to hopefully help you guys and make your balancing process a little bit quicker. Let's jump into that right now. First of all I want to talk about the theory behind getting this thing balanced. Now I've put together a quick animation which will hopefully allow you to understand this a little bit better. So here we have a representation of one of the gimbal's motors. I want you to imagine that there's a line running straight down the center of the motor. In order for the gimbal to be balanced, the weight to the left and right hand sides of this line needs to be equal. If there's more weight on the left, then the gimbal's going to tip to the left. And if there's more weight on the right, then the gimbal's going to tip to the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to balance the gimbal using a theory of opposites. So what I mean by that is that if there's too much weight on the left, then the gimbal's going to tip to the left. And in order to correct that, we're going to move the slider to the right in order to equalize the weight on the left and the right hand sides of that line. Similarly, if there's too much weight on the right, the gimbal is going to tip to the right and we need to move the slider to the left in order to equalize the weight on either side of the line. So we need to keep following this theory, making small adjustments either to the left or to the right as necessary until you can take away your hands from the gimbal and that little thumb screw that's currently in the 12 o'clock position doesn't move at all. So once you can take away your hands and the whole thing doesn't tip either to the right or to the left, and it stays perfectly in place, that's when you know that you've got it perfectly balanced and you can move on to the next axis. So now that we've looked at the actual theory behind what we're doing, let's get our hands on the gimbal and give it a go. Okay, so the first motor we're going to balance is this one labelled A1000. The thumb screw is in the 12 o'clock position and you can see that whenever I let go with my hand, the camera tips to the left hand side. 
Now that's because there's more weight on the top of the camera than there is on the bottom. So I'm going to undo the thumb screw and I want to slide the slider to the right hand side in order to balance the weight out. Now the way that this works is you want to make larger adjustments initially and as you get closer and closer to that sweet spot you want to make your adjustments smaller and smaller in order to fine tune the balance. So you can see here that the camera is still tipping from side to side so I'm still making small adjustments just to get it to that right point. Okay, great. So you can see that I've taken my hand away and that the camera is balanced with the thumb screw in that 12 o'clock position. I'm happy with that and I'm going to lock it off and move on to the next adjustment. So the next one we're going to adjust is the base plate on the bottom of the camera. We want to start with the camera in an upright position and use our right hands to support the other gimbal motor so it doesn't move around. Now you can see that when I take my left hand away, the camera is front heavy. So what I'm going to need to do is undo the thumb screw and shift the camera backwards on the base plate in order to find that point of balance. You'll probably find that adjusting the base plate is the most difficult of all of the adjustments you're going to have to make because it requires different levels of pressure to push the camera forwards or pull it backwards on the plate and so it's often quite difficult to find that sweet spot in the middle. But once you're happy with it and you can take away your hands without it moving, just lock off the thumb screw and the best way to test that you've got good balance at this point is to rotate the camera, take your hand away and as long as the camera stays in the same position you know that you're perfectly balanced and you can move on to the next motor. Right so now we're happy with that we're going to adjust this one that's labelled Feiyu Tech. You can see that the thumb screw is once again in the 12 o'clock position and it looks like the camera is heavier on the left hand side so we're going to slide the slider to the right to find that point of balance. Now balancing this gimbal motor is exactly the same as the A1000 motor that we've just done so I'm going to speed through this until we find that sweet spot and then I'm just going to lock it off with the thumb screw and then we can move on to the final motor which is the one right at the bottom of the gimbal now I've used two speakers here to lift the gimbal off the ground so that I can actually move this gimbal motor around but if you don't have anything to lift it up you can just place it on your legs and it does the same job. Now it's quite difficult to see what's going on here in the camera angle but you can see that once again that thumb screws at the 12 o'clock position and if I let go with my hand it looks like this time the rig is heavier to the right hand side. So I'm going to undo the thumb screw and we're going to slide that slider off to the left to find that point of balance. Now one thing that I've noticed with my model is that the slider on the bottom motor is actually more difficult to move than any of the others. I don't know if that's on all of the A1000s or if it's just on my model but it's just something to bear in mind. Um, sometimes it can make it easier to adjust the bottom one but sometimes it can make it very difficult. Okay so it looks like I've found that nice sweet spot, the gimbal's not moving at all, it's resting at the 12 o'clock position so I'm going to lock it off. Next I'm going to stand the gimbal upright, I'm going to press and hold that power button and hopefully the gimbal will spring to life with no issues. If the gimbal's not balanced correctly it will jutter or spin around uncontrollably but if you've got everything right it will pan smoothly like this and you're all ready to shoot. Okay so now that we've got the gimbal balanced let's have a look at what kind of difference it can make to our footage. So I took mine out for the first time here in China and I shot the same shot three times. The first time is just the camera handheld in both hands. The second time is going to be the A1000 on the single handed grip and the third time is going to be the A1000 on the dual handed grip. Now I'm just going to pop all of that footage on the end here, so if you've liked the video please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in my life here in China then please consider subscribing to the channel and I hope that you've liked this video, goodbye for now.